woman this decade in Southeast Asia, Amanda Lim. To be honest, it will be pretty difficult for the field because she looked comfortable this morning and yet was the only one to go below 26 seconds. The finalists for the event number 605, women's 15 minutes freestyle. Amanda, remember, with history in her sights, last SEA Games, she matched Jocelyn Yeo in winning this four in a row. Her opportunity now to become the first to win it five on the bounce. And every year that she's won this event, she has lowered her time. Right up to her 2015 record of 25-59. Only Amanda, Tingwen, Mylene, Nathanan and Janjira have gone below 26 seconds. Amanda, Tingwen, Nathanan and Janjira are in this field of eight. Mystery of Indonesia in lane number one only three Indonesian medals since 1989 in this event Nguyen Tian this is one of the three national records she doesn't hold Kwa Tingwen of Singapore two times silver medalist to Amanda is swimming beside the Queen the fastest woman in Southeast Asia since 2009 Jasmine Alcaldi, who finished third in 2015. Filipino record holder, 25-79. She's in five. And then the very quick Janjira Srisad, probably the quickest reactor off the blocks. She's in lane number six, the national record, 25-72, that she set this year. Nathanan Jungkrajang of Thailand, who was second in 2013 in this event. She's in seven in her final race of her SEA Games career. And Ilan Tan of Malaysia, the 18-year-old from Penang, is in lane number eight. 50 meters freestyle women final. Huge contrast in styles of Nguyen Tian Vien, who loves the underwaters along with Ting Wen and Amanda, who will get up as quickly as possible to the surface and use those strong arms of hers to propel herself home. She has done that since 2009. Can she make it five in a row in 2017? Yet again, the swimmer in lane number six has just exploded off the box, and that is Janjira Srisad. But Amanda, this is where she takes over. At the moment, a very fast swim in lane number five from Jasmine Alcaldi. So too, Janjira Srisad. But this is where she can't live with Amanda because Amanda's arms are just moving in double quick time at the moment. At little windmill and propeller, Karching Wen is slowly getting back into this. Is she going to get some revenge over Amanda? Amanda has to hold on right now because there's a strong challenge coming in from the ties. And Amanda does hold on and she wins yet again. 0.05 over Karching Wen. And Janjira finishes in third place. What a swim that one was, the closest race she's had in her SEA Games career, but she makes it five in a row, unprecedented, 25-41, and true to form, every time she swam in this event at the SEA Games, she has lowered her record, and she has done it yet again. Ting Wen gave it her best shot, it was still not good enough to catch up with the fastest, the queen of the sprints in Southeast Asia, Amanda Lim, Janjira Sri Saad, we expected her to just explode and rocket off the blocks. That she did. Underwaters as much as possible. Amanda getting to the surface quick enough. So it's very deceptive round about this time that she's not in the lead. But the moment her arms are allowed to move and the moment she gets that windmill action going, the human propeller just takes it home from there on because she is so strong with her upper body. Just slightly ahead of Ting Wen, Janjira has to settle for bronze. Team Singapore have overtaken their goal tally from Palembang. And in terms of just being the Southeast Asian Games, if we discount the Southeast Asian Peninsula Games, but the Southeast Asian Games, this is the best showing.
for Kwa Ting Wen, it's her 13th silver medal, individual silver medal, and Janjira Srisad, yet again, wrong era, wrong time, has to settle for third, just ahead of Jasmine Alcaldi, but Amanda Lim, my goodness, she certainly has taken the 50 meters freestyle swimming in this region to brand new heights, elevated it altogether, five in a row. All of her wins have gone sub-26. All of her wins have gotten faster. And this year, she has had a personal battle with Ting Wen. First and second at the age group champs and national champs, and then now first at the SEA Games. This is definitely a very great feat for Singapore. Is there any other pressure to doing this like get a fifth time in a row? Yeah, definitely there is pressure and stress, but you know, over these years I've learned to convert that into motivation and you know uh, and you know we I have like my team behind me, my mom and you know my family's in the stand supporting me, my family back home. I didn't want to disappoint them and I really gave it my all. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't want to say that, but I hope I can keep doing that for a few more sea games to come. Yeah. Thank you. Huh? My next target, uh, right now, I'm just looking for a really, really long break. Okay, not, not really long, but at least a short holiday, and then I have to go back to school for my last semester. And after that, I have to discuss my plans with Stefan, you know. He hasn't really stepped into training yet, but I'm looking forward to really training with him and, you know, just see how this relationship can work out because he has a great deal of experience behind him and he's a spring coach, so I'm pretty excited for that. Yeah. It's a very young team as Yeah. Definitely, this is the fastest SEA Games ever. I think swimming has gone to a next level and the young ones on our team have shown that you know, they have the potential to go even further next year, uh, Asian Games 2018, even to 2020. You know, we have all the rookies, Ching Hui getting bronze in the 800 free, Francis you know, stepping up just behind turn. So I think all of them will also keep us on our toes. <laughs> yeah, definitely look, look, uh, looking forward to being more teams with them also. Not to. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, overall, I think um, it's a pretty tough meet. I think just the way the uh, the events were lined up. Um, at the same time, it was kind of nice having two rest days. It's not. It's not very not. Uh, Common for me. I just I, I swim quite a few events, so I'm usually swimming heats and finals every day. So this this schedule is a little bit different, um, difficult in its own way. But uh, yeah, I'm just glad I pulled through. Talk about your sister's performance. My sister's? Yeah. Um, I'm proud. Um, oh, in general. Oh, sorry, second to game. Okay. Yeah. Um, in general, I 
I don't know if you guys remember, but two years ago she only swam one event on the first, she was done after the first day, she swam the 400 IM and she came in third, which is impressive uh, for a 14 year old, but um, you know, she's just, she's really grown into her own person and um, as a swimmer I think she is, she's special, um, she's very tough, uh, I, you've seen her before and after her races, the way she just approaches things and um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm excited for her to see what, you know, what happens in the future. Uh, yes and no. I think all three of us are very different. Um, not very different. We are, diff we are similar and different in certain aspects, I guess. Uh, she, I think the one thing in common that we all have is that we like to race. Uh, we're very competitive and um, we're very, we're quite, I don't know, not proud, like arrogant proud, but like we're proud of our sport, uh, of what we do and how we perform. And, and I think um, that's, kind of, that's kind of what help, has helped us um, be in the sport for so long and successful in our way, I guess. Um, Quite satisfied. Uh, it's been quite a difficult year, I think, for me. And um, sorry. <laughs> I think the thing about back-to-back -back events is that um, you kind of have to put aside. How you feel about certain things and separate that from the next race that you have to do. And I think that's one of um, the most difficult things and um, it can really test you as a person and as an athlete. And um, so, yes, I am proud of how I think I handled myself at this meet. Um, I think there are definitely things that can be improved. Um, but like I said, it's been a tough year for me, uh, both physically and um, in other areas. So I'm just, I'm actually happy um, and proud. And it's helped so much that I've had, you know, my teammates and my siblings here with me. And my parents, <laughs> sorry. I'm just kind of, I'm just a bit tired. <laughs> um, so... I took a long break after Rio last year, um, got back into it in October and training was going pretty well but I was having a lot of problems with an old injury and I had to get surgery done in November. Um, kind of threw me off, that was fine, I mean like I kept telling myself that I had time, I had time, like there were trials in March but um, you know I've had surgery before so I kind of knew like what I had to do after so I think having that plan helped me in focus on what I had to do um, physically. Uh, but I think after that it's just a little bit difficult. You know, I'm not I'm not 17 anymore. It's it's um it gets tiring so